Kind of. Alexa, volume up. This is our next topic. Alexa, Alexa. volume up. Listen. I just gave birth to an IPA. Is that supposed to be elevator music? Smooth jazz. Oh. Alexa, stop. Killing me. Okay. That is fucking horrible. That is like, I am going to kill myself now. Music. Whoever comes up with that, whoever is playing that music has to be the most boring, uh, just evil piece of shit in the world. He's probably like a super talented musician, but he's like, oh, I got this fucking horrible gig <laughs> making this yeah. shit. But he's just like super talented that no one ever recognizes it. So he's like, but he does really well. Like, what do you do? I make elevator music, smooth jazz bullshit. And he goes, well, let me hear what yeah. you like. And he's like, ah, he's just fucking like, well, why'd you do that? Uh, nobody wants to pay for it. He's like, got to pay the bills. But I mean, there, I mean, that's the kind of stuff, you know, like, like they say, elevator music, a lot. I never hear music in the elevator anymore, but if I ever did, I'm no expert. But when you're on hold, that's the kind of shit that they play. Yeah. And and I think on purpose to drive so you fucking hang crazy. Like, so you hang out. Yeah. yeah, it's like, and then they play it in a loop, you know, they'll play two or three bad smooth jazz songs like that uh, in order to just piss you off. Okay, that's it. I'm hanging up. I give up. You know what it reminds me of? That's the goal. Yeah. An unwelcome phone call from a guy breathing on the other end. Remember those? People used to do yeah, that. Yeah, I used shit. to make those calls all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's so stupid, but awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> The good old days, no fucking caller ID. What color panties are you wearing? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> fucking prank calls were the best. The best, yeah. Jerry. The best. The best. Fuck, I loved them. Yeah, yeah, they were good. Yeah, I used to make a lot of those. Um, My actually, I got. I met some people that way, you know. I actually talked to this girl for a long time, uh, once in a while, just because it was supposed to be a prank call, but then, you know, she was hip to the humor, and then we got along, and we just kept talking, so. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you want to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, that never happened, but, you know, it was. My my friend, when we were, we were, we were in, like, grade 11 or 12, and, and during a sleepover, and making and back then you know you had the white pages and you have their name and address and everything right i mean nowadays yeah. that that would freak the shit out of everybody and of course. Um, so he call asian people and tell them they're getting deported oh for and they're like i'm canadian i'm a canadian no you're I'm, we're sending people over there now we're tired of your shit you know it's like it just like he did really like kind of like that's pretty mean that's yeah mean i would play pranks on people you know, yeah. like, hey, there's a bomb under your house. You got five minutes to live. Ha, ha, ha. Click. No. But. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But I you mean. make a movie was, about that. <laughs> there was uh, one where um, there was a Corvette for, for grabs. And if I told you this, you can stop me. Um, it was my favorite prank calls ever. We were up on this right around when OJ went on that fucking Bronco trip. And um, so I was living in this basement. Hell's Angels lived above us. Um, good guys, though. Like, we left our door unlocked, you know, kind of shit. You felt safe. And uh, yeah. and so we were up all night fucking partying. And we, I'm like, hey, let's let's do prank calls, you know. And my friend wants to do his. I'm like, no, no, no. You get a little racist. Uh, <laughs> um, <we'll... laughs> yeah. So so we, um, I started calling people. And I'm like. Hi, this is Jim from C95. You know, and I was pretending to be the DJ from C95, the local radio FM station, the biggest station in town in, in Saskatoon. Yeah. And I said, uh, 
did you see the Corvette on the corner of 22nd? Yeah. I go, you won! You know, like, and it, we were calling people two in the morning, three in the morning. One, I was like all in the middle of the night, getting them out of bed, you know, and you're like, I, I won! You know, it's like nobody, oh. as soon as they thought they want something called bullshit, nobody. No, everyone is so fucking greedy, right? So I said, all you got to do is be at the radio station tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. to collect your prize. You know, and they're like, there's going to be lots of people there, giveaways, blah, blah, blah. We're going to have a big party. You know, it's like, they're like, oh, fuck, honey, honey. You know, we won the Corvette. And everyone would know that Corvette because it's a small town, city. But it's like everyone passes by that Corvette. Husky, the gas station Husky was giving it away. So yeah. um, it was like everyone knew about it. So no one fucking, nobody hung up on me. Nobody. And so we're like, we're getting everybody to meet at 8 o'clock at the radio station. But we're drinking oh. all night, and we all fucking fell asleep. I would have and killed you, Jim. Oh, oh, it was fucking... It, I, I wanted to go there so bad, and then we all woke yeah, up after you, 8. And we just yeah. wanted to watch everybody roll up. Where's my corner? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, fuck, but nobody, no, everyone was super excited. And I did it very convincing. I wasn't, I probably didn't sound like a teenager, you know, because I did the DJ boys, you know, it was like... But it was yeah. it was so it was so awesome. Those are good old days. And then then uh, then Troy wanted to go back and like, well, let's call a few Asians. And I'm like, eh, it's, no. It's like, <laughs> it just really wanted to deport people. <laughs> right. But Some that people was, just that yeah. was my favorite prank call ever or call yeah. ever. But no call waiting or dot or caller display. None of that shit. Can never. Right. Well, you still can do that. I can do that on my phone because I have a Google number. So it's not my real number. I don't care if they fucking call it back hey where's my car i was like yeah, yeah. stupid <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i don't think i ever had any prank calls you're done stupid. to me <laughs> <laughs> you're stupid that would have been a good banner to have at the radio station <laughs> you're all stupid <laughs> uh but yeah. what a what an opera i mean none of us had a video camera either so we couldn't we could have just we could have only took it in you know like just watched it happen unfold and I mean, nobody yeah. had security cameras, so there wouldn't be security footage. Like, the security guard's like, hey, what the fuck's going on? Are we having an event this morning? Because yeah. <laughs> we're just yeah. going randomly through the whole fucking phone book. It was, oh, another one that we did was actually, it was my idea. It was really, I didn't think about it at the time, what I was doing. But actually, it was a really good social experiment. And so we would call apartments and say, hey, do you have an apartment for rent? But I do it in an Indian voice. Hey, you got a permit for it, there, eh? Like, oh, no, no, we don't have anything available. Call back as a white person. Boom. Yeah, come on down. Fucking. Uh -huh. Yeah. Every fucking place was like that. You say you have the Indian voice. They don't want anything to do with you. White voice. Come on down. It was like, it was, we were fucking with them. But then we realized, man, this fucking pretty, <laughs> pretty racist fucking town against Indians, you know? And to me, yeah. I, I was never... I never consider myself racist. I more like generalize, you know, um, or I, you know, little things here and there. But for the most part, I treat everybody like, you know, I want to be treated. And um, it was really yeah. kind of shocking and disappointing in people that yeah. they were so quick to do that. Now that I do those kind of apartment jobs, like, uh, I, you know, if I should do yeah. that because I just had one and I called as I always called a white person, but I should call as an, a minority and see how they react and then put that in my report like yeah when i called as a white person they said no problem when i called as a fucking indian they said oh we're full you know because that would be a really i should do that just and i should post a video fuck yeah just, just of the calls. Yeah, i'm not going to say which company it is because i probably get in trouble but yeah it was a really interesting prank you, you know what would help with that um if you put it on blackface <laughs> i'd make the calls in blackface <laughs> Hey, works for Trudeau. Feel right here, <laughs> Indian boys. You got a black <laughs> face on. Sit the prank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or yeah, just do do phone calls in blackface and just talk normal, and see yeah. how many people get upset. You know. Yeah. And that'll be the experiment, not the phone call, but just how people no. react to the video. That makes no fucking sense because how's anybody going to hear my blackface? So it's like, yeah, it's it's really weird, though. And there's so many people that would jump on like, oh, you fucking motherfucker, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm just pointing out how stupid you are, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've, I, 
I fucking fell in a vat of shoe polish, you asshole. I can't get the shit off my face, but you want to call me a racist? You motherfucker. <laughs> Contact the shoe polish company. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? What are we talking about? <laughs> You go to prom, contact the shoe polish company. <laughs> if they would have made this product, I could have done this. <laughs> you could have used marker like I'm going to take that kind of time. <laughs> Did you ever, um, there was a movie, but it was, I read the book. I never actually saw the movie. It's called Black Like Me. I think, um, I think so. Dal I think Timothy Dalton or Hutton, one of the Timothys was the guy but this actually this guy actually went and got like some kind of pigmentation thing done and this is back like in the 70s or 80s and so he became okay. super dark and he wanted to live like a black person for a while and experience life as a black person it's pretty okay interesting. so then yeah i definitely did not see it oh well, it's yeah. it's a it's not a very long read but it's a yeah I, rem I read it in high school and i was like fuck and it's called black like me yeah and it's it was interesting. Like, I, I always kind of liked that stuff as a kid just to kind of get outside, you know. No, but why are you reading that? You know, it's like, because it's there and I'm interested, you know. That's usually right. why people read shit. Like, oh, fuck, I have no reading. idea why I'm reading this. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just school, getting my man. hands. It's not a math book, for fuck's sakes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was really interesting. But that was, um, in Saskatoon, it's extremely... Uh, split between like the Indians and the whites, like there's there's a lot of racism there. I mean, I was threatened by Indians, but my first, best friend first peoples, was Indian. first peoples, Jim. first nations or first people. No, now it's first peoples. Oh, okay. First people. Well, my my buddy Dan, who's a big ass Indian, he's like, I'm a fucking Indian. <laughs> yeah, he's the like, big ass Indian. Oh, he's he's a big dude. Yeah, he's but he's like he he was so funny. Like in high school, he was a monster, not bad at all, just super. And he was adopted, so he had white parents. So he had a nice blend of of introspective life, you know, like because he'd go to the Reds because he had relatives there. But he always like, hey, anybody need cigarettes? <laughs> you know, like we're all in yeah. high school, man. I don't, not not too many of us smoke. Was, oh, fuck, you know, I need to sell some because he'd make money off that, right? It's tax free on the Reds. But um, a lot yeah, of us smoked in high school. You did. Um, yeah, well, I did off and on, but a lot of people did. Um, but. Uh, there were some uh, Indian First Nations guys. Um, first Peoples, Martin. I was just told by somebody. First people. And I don't. I don't. Know. I was just told by somebody too. And so I don't know if it's First Peoples or First People. I'm not sure the the plural how that works. But anyway, I remember this guy Alfie. Uh, it was a hilarious guy. Um, you know, he always he chewed tobacco. He always had that. I always had that ring in the back pocket of the tobacco chew thing, just like the cowboys did. And he, he kind of talked like a cow. He was first people. Um, he talked like an Indian and no, he talked like a cowboy. And, uh, but he had this kind of deep voice too. It was just oh, a funny, but he could have been, people, he could have been a not, comedian. Not could have been a great, what? They're cow people, not cowboys anymore. Sorry. First cow people. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Anyway, he maybe he did go on to be a stand-up comic because he was really great at that. Um, but the chew just added to it for some reason. Um, and then uh, it just reminded me of your dude there with the cigarettes. Anyway, a lot of us smoked, whether regularly or not, in high school. Yeah. Um, when you said chew tobacco, at first I thought you said he used to shoot tobacco. I'm like, whoa, hardcore. <laughs> He was ahead of his. He was ahead of his time. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty crazy in uh, in Saskatoon, um, and I think one of the activists just died. But it's really really sad. It's just I I hate this shit. But the the cops, you know, you get a call, you got a drunk Indian, so they come and they take him, and they, it'd be in the winter time. They take him out of the fucking city, and then just leave him, and they fucking try to walk to the res or wherever, and they die. So this one guy actually lived. He knew of a place that was close by where they dropped him off. It was a shack that yep. like a power 
thing. So he banged on the door. They let him in. So he lived. So then he was able to go back and he started fighting for all these guys. They were just, they, I, they call it the uh, Starlight Tour or something like that. But the yeah. fucking Saskatoon police just fucking murdering people and no one ever fucking held accountable. You know, I mean, some investigations were done, but none of these people are fucking face prison time. Fucking murdering people. You cannot go and leave someone in minus 30 with no fucking clothes, you know, or even a jean jacket. You know, it's fucking insane. It, it, and it's so sad that somewhere along the line, this seemed acceptable to people to treat people like this. And it's There's still, only it's one still side. There's uh, only one side to that, Jim. Um, the the Indians are are horrible people. They always have been through since the beginning of time, and they just want to kill the white people. So there's only one way of looking at it, really. You know, they've been offered so many land, like so many times, like five times at least. Um, they just don't. They just want to kill white people. So I don't know why you're upset. You well, know what I'm saying? I think the government should just like drop leaflets all over the country and then murder all the kids while they're at school. Absolutely. Just That's the only them. solution. Just get rid of the whole yep. lineage. Yep. It's pretty crazy what's fucking being on earth. It's insane. In Canada, fucking fuck. I fuck Canada, man. I mean, right now, I mean, the government, of course, I love Canada. I, I'm so happy that I grew up in Canada and was raised in Canada. Um, I'm very thankful for all of that because it's a different mindset than down here. Um, but now it's just yeah. like it's it's heart wrenching to see what's what's happening. And then even like Pascal or you posting shit and you can't even post it. You know, know. the government's fucking filtering there. It's 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 like beyond belief. It's, yeah. And it's getting worse, too. Now they're now he's clamping down on uh, podcasts as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was. uh he, they're Talk they're taking control of podcasts. But if you're if I'm feeding it, then they have no control over you, right? Like I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna work. It'll be yeah. interesting. I mean, if I'm um, posting, they don't need to know where you are anyway. So, but I don't. No, it really... doesn't, doesn't matter. They just want to, you know, they want to control it here. Information. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It's really. Uh, I, I I'm. Yeah, I, I cannot believe, and there's still people that just are pro Trudeau, you know. And I'm just like, yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, retarded folk out there. <laughs> that, because he he appeases to, like to the idiots, you know, people who can't think for themselves. So he says things because people want to be woke. People love being woke right now, right? They're like, oh, I, I you know, blah blah blah. But the, the thing is, the the woke movement is actually the opposite of what it should be, right? You know, being yeah. being woke should mean you're you're aware and you're enlightened, not you're a social justice warrior and a virtual signaler, you know, where you yeah. don't use facts to make a point. You just use feelings and it's all about feelings. You know, we don't want to about offend. How you I have no problem so. offending people. That's an actually good thing to learn. How to pro I've been offended. I'm offended every fucking day by a lot of groups and I just process it. I don't fucking yeah. go anti this, anti that. I'm just like, you know, that's, it's the world we live in. You know, I'm not going to yeah. agree with everybody. That's okay. I know a lot of people don't agree with me, you know, and that's cool. Cause I don't want to be like everybody else. You know, I have no desire. I just want to be me, you know, and if you can't just, you know, like, oh, you're this phobic or that phobic. I mean, you're the How phobic. dare you be Shame you. Shame on you. Shame. Yeah. Shame. Shame, yeah. Shame, shame, shame. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's really weird. Yeah, it on was Friday weird. was the first day I've ever actually open carried in my life. I had my gun on my side when I went out in public, and I went yeah. on hollow point guns or uh, bullets. And it was, it was interesting because when I came home, there was two probation officers across the street. There's a fucking felon across who's on probation, and you know he's trying. He's He's, I think he's trying to fix his shit up, but, yeah. uh, they're, they have their shirts on probation, their gun. And I get out of my car and I got my gun and this guy's like, fuck, this guy's a lot of fucking guns around here today, you know, but I yeah. wanted to kind of everybody, cause we've had some kind of shit going on around the neighborhood. So I was just like, you know, 
I'm just going to advertise it. Don't fuck with me, you know, because I'm I'll fucking I like. I, oh, I, I told this one guy I was having a conversation with him and I said, speaking of Trudeau. Mm-hmm. And I have to be very careful because I'm well, um, I'll do cryptic. OK, I'm going to be a little cryptic here just because okay. I really yeah. feel kind of everything is kind of monitored. And but I said, if I and I probably won't be very good at being cryptic. <laughs> Cause I told him I couldn't. And then I just fucking anyway. So I said, if I didn't have an and B to worry about, especially an Aya B not so much cause she's an adult. Um, well actually if B wasn't in my, if I didn't have a kid in a relationship, I would probably be. B. Uh, the word would be an ass and a assin. Right. And, yeah. uh, and I would go and take out people. That would be my pleasure. And the guy's like, really? And I said, absolutely. Way to be this. cryptic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at it. So if I get a no. knock on the door, I'm like, hey. you know. But I, I do have them. So that's the thing. I, I, I can't put them at risk, right? But it's just like yeah. there's certain people, like little Klaus's fucking group of fucking friends. you know. And I wanted to write a script about that. Some fucking traveling comedian. You know? traveling comedian you wouldn't suspect it but every town he's in someone important that's a horrible person just ends up not being around and unalive depopulated you know depopulated yes the yeah. depopulators yeah i'd be a depopulator yeah yes right so um that's kind of because i feel like right now it's weird that you know here kennedy got killed he shouldn't have been depopulated right yeah and there's a lot of people that should be, and that shit doesn't really happen much anymore. It's kind of weird. Really? I mean, there's a lot of security, a lot of cameras, a lot of intel and stuff like that. The whole thing is you'd have to have it in your mind and then just never tell anybody, and you'd have to be totally cryptic. Well, not cryptic. You just have to be totally you'd benign, have to be, like, and not, you know. Yeah. You could you'd tell have to anybody. not tell anybody. Yeah. 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 And so that would be, I was like, that'd be a great thing, like a, a traveling comedian who's a fucking mercenary, <laughs> but he doesn't do it for pay. Like, that's what I told the guy. I said, well, he goes, what would you do? I said, I wouldn't do it for pay. That's fucking morbid. I do it for a principle for humankind, people who are pressing people. And you, yep. you, you, what you, you create a shock and a fear. It, it will take care of a lot of things. You know, it's not like you got to go do a whole bunch of stuff. You just got to make a, make a statement just like they always do like mandates. Right. Like imposing their mm-hmm. will, I would impose my will through a fucking seven six two round, you know, or a three oh three oh eight, thirty odd six, whatever. Forty four, what happened? The what nice happened? uh Lapua would be cool, but that's really loud. Well I can get a silencer. But um not now. I'm sure the government would say you're not allowed to have one now. I heard what you said. So Yep. But that's right. I can go get a class three weapon. But that's what I, I, I maybe I should just write the story. And then that would invoke fear because there's a lot of truth and story, right? So it's, yep. uh, but it is, it's really weird that something hasn't happened. I just, I actually find that very odd, but often Canadians, like my dad wrote, Canadians are really good at complaining. <laughs> right. And they really tried with the convoy to, to do something besides complain. Then look what happened. You know, so this guy is a tyrant. He's a fucking dictator. Yeah. He's, he's, he's out of control. And he's such a fucking liar. And, and like, I, I just don't understand because any I would feel that any time a prime minister spoke to the public, it would be considered under oath. Just the same as under oath. It should be considered just the same as under oath. And then when you can bring in the other stuff showing you're a liar, guess what? You're going to be tried for lying under oath. Your job is to be truthful to the people, transparent to the people. And when you lie and manipulate and you say, we never forced anything on anybody. It's anybody's choice. They may have their own reasons for not wanting the vaccine. And they don't get the vaccine and they won't be there. But, 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 you know, like, how can you. And there's, there's where the, there's where a lot of irony comes in because, uh, you know, I've talked about this at length with a friend of mine who lives in Alberta and uh, hates Trudeau and uh, has compared him, rightly so, to Trump. And he's uh, 